All right, guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I'm building this hoop house, a new shade house, and it's 20 feet wide, and the way that I do this, you can build it 20 feet long, 40 feet long, 100 feet long, or 500 feet long, whatever you want to do, but it's going to be 20 feet wide, and that's kind of the model that I'm using today to build this one, and I'm going to go through this step by step, how I do it. This has taken place over several different days, so you'll notice... I look different, we look different in different clips, but we're gonna show you how we do this, and this really is a good project for a DIY type of person. So check out how we put our shade house together. The first thing we got to do is get the layout put down on the ground for this thing before we build it. So we got to make sure that our rectangle, 20 by 40, is actually a rectangle. So we got that laid out, we got that marked, and the next thing we had to do is put our marks down for where our, for where our ground posts would go. All right, we've got this laid out nice and square. Got my trusty marking paint here, so we're gonna put a mark every four feet where our ground post will go for our next shade house. So here we go. All right, folks, we're getting ready to put all of our posts in the ground today. Our foundation poles for our hoop house and just to make sure that everybody's clear on what I use for these. There's not some special source that you have to go to out there that's hidden from normal people like you and like me to get these things. All these are is parts that are used to build a chain link fence. And I bought mine at Home Depot. And a chain link fence basically has four parts to it. It has the actual fence itself. And aside from the fence, it has what's called the top rail. That's the rail that runs along the top of the fence. And then it has the line post, which are the posts put in consecutive order running the length of a fence. And then it has the end post. The posts that you need for this are the top rail and the line post. And all you do is you take the top rail and, and you insert those into the line post. So what you see here, what you see that I'm about to put into the ground, what you're going to buy is line posts. I think the diameter is one and five eighths inches, I believe. And the top rail's diameter is one and three eighths inches. And the one and three eighths will slide right into the one and five eighths inch. So again, all you're using is common parts that you can find at a fence supply store, Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere that sells chain link fence material. All I've taken is these line posts. I bought them eight feet long. I've cut them in half so they're four feet long and drive about two feet of them in the ground. And that's what I'm going to do here before we get to the next step. So let's drive some posts. But right before we do, a quick word from a sponsor that I think you're going to love. The Barn Owl Box Company. Now our friends over at the Barn Owl Box Company have sent us this Barn Owl Box and we have gotten an education on these incredible little animals. And what I didn't know is that people involved in agriculture and in horticulture all over America from vineyards to hay farmers to orchard growers, they're using barn owls, attracting them to their own properties as a primary means of rodent control. So a family of barn owls, which is about two adults and three to five babies, consume a thousand to three thousand rodents every year, which it depends on like if it's a mouse, a rat, or a gopher, the amount of rodents they'll eat, it'll be more or less. Now the owl box is made of a durable white plastic, and there are two real advantages to that. Number one, is it's going to be heat resistant. It's going to repel some heat during the summer so the inside of the box doesn't get so hot. And secondly, the box is going to last and last and last. In fact, it's going to outlast me and it's going to outlast you, unlike a wooden box. Another advantage is that it's not going to be attractive to bees. It's not like a bee can't get in it, but they're going to be pretty much bee resistant and that's a really good thing to have with an owl box. I'm very excited to see if a barn owl will nest in this box. Barn owls are beautiful birds and they're also really cool. So if you're interested in learning more about barn owls or interested in getting yourself a barn owl box, go check out barnowlbox.com to get started on your own journey with the barn owls. All right, now we're gonna drive these posts into the ground and I have a, a post driver to do that with and we're just gonna show you what that looks like.
So you guys saw the post driver that I used to drive those posts with. I just wanted to show it to you and show you what it is. This is a gas powered post driver and this one's made by Titan and I'll put a link to it in the description below in the Savvy Dirt Farmer Amazon store. But this thing has been absolutely awesome for us. We've driven hundreds of T-posts out here building fence with this thing and we've also used it to drive all of our ground posts in for our shade houses. And they make this little insert to go on the bottom of it down here where that slides down inside of a pole like for, for driving round posts like for our shade houses. And anyway, it's been an awesome little tool. So if you're interested in it, just check it out. Now that we have our pipes in the ground, our foundation posts in the ground for our shade house, now we've got to build the bows, the arches that we're going to use to make the, the tall structure for building this thing. Now the way that I make these is with a chain link hop rail and bent into place. And I use this tool. This is a pipe bender. It takes that top rail, that top pipe from the chain link fence and you bend it across this pipe bender frame here. And there's a link down in the description below where this pipe bender comes from exactly like this one. And you can get them for hoop houses 20 feet and several sizes smaller than 20 feet if you're interested in building something smaller. In fact, I've got one on the way to me right now for a smaller hoop house. But anyway, I use this and I don't know how you can build these without it. There's some way you could build yourself a jig, I'm sure, to do it with, but this is the only way that I know how to do it and where you're having a consistent bend in your pipe. So they're all bent really close to the same. None of them are gonna be identical, but this gets you a really consistent product when you're bending these pipes. So let me show you exactly how to do this. This is a 10 foot long top rail chain link fence. And you just take this and lay it right on top down to the end, there's a little holder down there, a little strap to hold that in. And you want about 10 inches of excess sticking out down here. It doesn't matter exactly, just try to be consistent. You're gonna step out this way and just reach up and grab it. You know, if you need to mount your pipe bender lower, if you're shorter than I am, you wanna work a little bit lower than I do, that's fine. Also worth mentioning that you can mount this pipe bender on, on anything. I just took a board here and hung it up on two posts on my deck and you gotta have some two four inch screws to mount this tightly with, but you can mount this on any solid surface. Mount it on the back of an old barn, a deck, put yourself a couple of posts in the ground, whatever you need to do. But once you get it in there, you just reach up to the top and you pull it down and it's not that hard to pull down and you just bend it until that bend follows the shape of the frame there. And once it does, you just relax on it and you push it down a couple of feet, two or three feet. I don't know exactly how long. Just try to be consistent when you do it. And then you bend it down again. So I bend it down to about right there where it follows that frame around. And then on your last one, you're gonna need you some kind of pry bar, a little cheater bar out here. And I just use one of my ground posts and I stick it on there and just pull that down for your last bend. And you can see that works really, really well. Let's see if I can get a little bit more here on this end. That's pretty good. So that's really all there is to it. Again, this little frame right here is just absolutely invaluable for building something like this. You buy it one time, you'll have it forever. You never have to replace it. So using this is what makes it possible for a DIY builder like me or for like you to build really nice hoop houses. We've got all of our hoops put together here now and I just about forgot to show you how to do it, but I've saved one here to put together. So if you'll come in here and just see what I'm doing, I've got these hoops bent now as they're supposed to be and you just take the ends and slide them together like so. Just get everything lined up good. And slide one end in the other and when you've got it laid out on flat ground, it'll keep it from getting a twist in it. So it just slides in there kind of naturally and you just take a self-tapping metal to metal screw and put it in there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other joint, just get it lined up so it will slide in. If you've got it lined up right, it's not hard to slide in there. So just slide it in there and take your screw, drill it in there. That's one of your bows completely done. And now I've got 10 of these to go with the one that's over there. We're ready to put them up and it'll be to the next step. All right, let's pick it up and just walk it over there just to the second spot. 
And just do whatever you have to do to get that end down into the post and don't worry about my end. I'll straighten it up in a minute. And when you're putting these in, this whole thing will bend. It'll flex. And you just have to kind of work it out end to end. None of these bows are identical. It's like a fingerprint or a signature. You know, a machine didn't make these. A human make, makes them. I bend them, you bend them. So then you just have to kind of work it end to end to get them to slide down into the pole. A little on that side, a little on that side. But these top rails, if you just work them a little bit side to side, they'll fit right down into these posts just fine. All right guys, now that we've got our posts driven in, our bows put up, the next thing we're gonna do is put our baseboards down that will run the length of the shade house. Now, if the next thing you wanna do is the top rail, you can do the top rail, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But right now we're gonna do these baseboards. This is really easy to do, but I just wanna show you what it looks like. You can pick any corner to start on and you wanna run this two by six. It's just a pressure treated two by six. You're gonna run your two by six an inch and a half past the end of this pole. And you wanna do that so you can get this wall, your end wall built later on. But I'm gonna just use a simple one and a half inch width board here just to get my length right, my measurement right. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a 5 sixteenths inch hole through this board, through this pipe, and then we're gonna put a bolt through it. And now that you've got your hole drilled all the way through the two by six and all the way through the post, you wanna take a bolt. I use quarter inch. You can use bigger if you wanna use bigger. It doesn't matter. And I like to stick a washer on it and you need to get a four inch long bolt. So it's a quarter inch width, four inch long. Now make sure it's plenty long to stick all the way through. Put a washer on each side of it and twist you a nut there on the back. I know you can't see that, but all I'm doing is sticking that through, putting a washer and a nut on it and that's it. And I'm gonna do all these the same way, all the way down the length of this. And I'll come back later when I get done with them with a wrench and a socket and I'll tighten all of these down. Before we go on to anything else, just a quick word about those of you who think, well, I could never do that perfectly or if you're a perfectionist or that type of thing, I wanna show you some imperfections on this thing and just say something real briefly about that. Now have a look right here. You can see that these bows, and I bent these all by myself. So these are not machine done or factory done. They don't match up and they're not perfect. And some are bent more than others all the way down through this way. And it's like that all the way across the top of this thing. And then here on this 40 foot long wall where this baseboard runs, this post right here was not driven into the ground perfectly in line with all of the others. And it's left about a one inch gap right down here. Check this out on this gap right down here. And it's just the way that it's gonna be. Or here we have our channel where we're gonna put our, our wiggle wire into this track right here. And these two pieces of track right here, they just don't match up and they're not all that close. So guys, look, when you're building a shade house like this yourself, there's going to be imperfections everywhere. And you just gotta know that it doesn't matter. And the reason that I know it doesn't matter is I had a discussion about this with my plants and they simply don't care. And the purpose of this shade house, yeah, it's gonna look really nice out here, even with all the imperfections, but the purpose of it is to aid in growing plants and the plants don't care. So take some comfort, find some relaxation in knowing that I don't build these perfectly and you don't have to build yours perfectly either and it doesn't matter. Okay, now that we've got our baseboards put on, our bows put together and our top rail in place, now we're gonna put our wiggle wire channel into place. Now wiggle wire is really an awesome, awesome invention. And it is so critical in putting together a hoop house, especially in a way where it's gonna last and where it's gonna be kind of professional and not raggedy looking. Now, far be it for me to say something should be professional looking and far be it for me to act like I wouldn't do something that's raggedy looking, but I wanna show you how this works. It's a really cool thing. Let me show you what this is. These are, these are six foot pieces that I have. And let me just show you up close what this looks like. Now, this is a piece of, it's in a, it kind of makes a channel. Let me give you kind of an up close look at it. I don't know if you can see that, but. The shape of it is kind of in the shape of the letter C, and I'll show you why that matters in just a moment. But we're gonna take this and just real simply fasten it down along the edge here, 
all the way around the perimeter, up and over, down. This stuff will bend, and this works really well. So check out how wiggle wire tracking channel works. Now, I have taken my tracking and I have pre-drilled four holes down the length of this six feet, and these are the screws I use. These are Teak's screws. Maybe you can see that. And these are not self-tapping screws, but they are self-drilling screws. And if you get yourself some self-tapping screws, you don't need to pre-drill these holes. They'll just tap and drill right through the channel right into your wood frame here. But I don't have that, and I didn't want to buy any, so I just pre-drilled them. Nothing to that. And then you just drill this in here. Take any time at all. It's a pretty quick process once you kind of get the hang of it. And stick that screw in there. And I like to put this track right along the top of the top edge of the board here. So when you put your bolts in here, when you're anchoring your baseboard, when you're anchoring your baseboard to your post, just make sure that your bolt that you're putting through there is down below, you know, the top, just so they're not in the way. So that's just a tip that's worth knowing. I'm gonna just continue doing this all the way around the edges, putting four screws in per six feet of wiggle wire track, and then we'll come along and start putting our tracking around the bow, the part that goes up, and then we'll go from there. All right, now I've got my channel track for my wiggle wire, ran along the bottom all the way that way, and now we're gonna go up and over the bow this way. I've got two screws in this particular piece down here fastened to the bottom, and now it's gonna start curve. And you just take this and push it over. These are aluminum, they bend really easy. We're just gonna push it and fasten it down. Now, I've got this pre-drilled, and you can pre-drill them, or not, just depends on how good you are with self-tapping screws. Actually, some of them I pre-drill and some of them I don't, but the higher up you get, to me it gets a little harder. So I like to pre-drill them, or at least some of them, to make it a little bit easier. So you just drill that directly into your pole. And you can see how that makes it just conform to the shape of the bow. And you're gonna have to have this track on here to fasten your shade cloth after a while. So I'm gonna continue these all the way up, just putting one end to the other on the track, all the way up and all the way over and down the bow on the other side. And we gotta do that on this end and we have to do it on the far end so we have a place to fasten our shade cloth. So each end up and over, baseboards all the way over and down on each side for our wiggle wire track. All right guys, now on our shade house, we're gonna put the end wall on it. That just means the end and as far as I'm concerned, this is the hardest part. It's the trickiest part of the whole thing. And this is our old shade house, but what I wanna do is just make a big square here. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this and it depends on what you're going to use your shade house or your hoop house for. You know, some of these are built so they just have a door on them like a, a screen door going into a house or there's any number of ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna build our new one, which is right over here to mirror this one. It's about 15 feet over this way. You can see it's wide open, and I just want to show you how I'm doing this. Again, I'm no expert, but what I do works, and I just want to show you how we're going to do this. Now, our hoop house is 20 feet wide, and I'm taking my baseboards and cutting these lengths to six feet here and six feet over there, leaving an eight-foot opening. I just want to have a wide open end on it. Uh, I'm not closing this up with plastic. I don't need to make this climate controlled like a greenhouse or anything like that. This is strictly for shade. It's all I'm using this for. So we're gonna leave an eight foot opening, plenty of room to walk in and out. Multiple people could walk in and out. You could walk in and out pulling a wagon with no problem. So this is the way that we're gonna do this end. And the way that I'm going to do this is on that end of it, I've just screwed that this baseboard on the end wall to the baseboard on the long wall. And I'm gonna take a it's like a stake, it's like a big tent stake. You can use a stick of rebar, you can use anything you have. And I'm gonna hammer this down right up against it to secure this baseboard so this baseboard's not flopping back and forth. We want a good sturdy connection here. So I'll just drive that in down. It's about even with the board there. And then I'll put like a conduit clamp on that just to fasten it to it. and. We'll do that on both of these and our baseboards for this end wall will be set. All right guys, we've got our baseboards put down on the ground. We've got them staked down. Now we're going with these vertical posts that will serve as the frame for our door. So I've taken two screws and fastened the end of this two by four to the two by six on the floor. And now we're gonna straighten this up up here 
and make sure that it's as straight as we can get it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna take our 5 16 drill bit and drill right through this wood and right through this hoop, just like we did on our baseboards and ground post. We're gonna put our bolt through there and this is how we're gonna build our door frame. All right, we've got both of our vertical posts for our opening, our entrance framed up, our header across the top of it framed up. Now, the last thing that we need to do before we cover it in shade cloth is we need to take the channel track for our wire. And I'll show you that again in a little bit, but we need to take channel track and go around this because we have to fasten our shade cloth to it because we want this end to be shaded except for the actual opening. So we just put a couple of three or three and a half inch deck screws in here all the way around, just framing screws and off we'll be to the other end after this. Okay, we have both end walls completely framed in now with all of our track for our wiggle wire now put on it. You can see going up the door frame there on this end and there's not even going to be a door on the back side we're going to make that wall solid back there but you can see the track here it goes up all the way over there on the top of the door frame and it's also on the very top of the hoop up there all the way around and this is where we will fasten our shade cloth on the far side back there you can see the two by fours they're in the shape of a capital h those also have track channel on the back of them for the wire where we will fasten the shade cloth back there as well. Here's our shade cloth back here on this bank and we're ready to drag it up and over the top to completely cover our new shade house. Now we are, we've, we've got our shade cloth pulled over the top and I have fastened it down the length of a baseboard of 40 feet down on the ground. But I want to show you how this works. Now, if you'll come in and have a look at this wire right here, this is a pre-cut. You order this in like six or six and a half foot lengths of wire. And this wire is commonly known as wiggle wire. It may be called channel wire or greenhouse wire or something like that. But as far as I know, people call this stuff wiggle wire. And we're going to pull this shade back. And you'll remember that I showed you this channel. And this channel we have fastened here to the top of our bows on the end walls of our shade house. So you can see that's one of the screws here and it's fastened down and it forms to the shape of it. And you just pull your shade cloth over the top of that. And we can't really pull it tight yet because it's not fastened on the other end. So we're gonna take our wiggle wire and our track is right here under our shade cloth. We just folded it over it and I've got a piece of wire already up to this point it ends right here so you just stick this in the channel right there and then you just go back and forth with it inside that channel and that's tight I mean that is very tight and that will hold it'll hold that shade cloth down for forever as far as I'm concerned now you can see how that works it's one of those things where once you get the feel of it and once you kind of get the hang of that, that goes fast. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. And you can cut this wire with just standard wire cutters, particularly if you've got some that are kind of heavy duty. But you can also take this wiggle wire if you want to build you a hoop house and cover, the, cover your hoop house in plastic. Same application. You run your plastic right over the top of this channel, put your wiggle wire on top of that. If you want to do a shaded plastic, then you put your plastic down and you put wiggle wire over that. Then you put your shade cloth over the top of the plastic and you put another row, another run of wiggle wire. You can put two, two runs of wire in this if you've got multiple layers of something you need to do. It's just a number of ways that you can use this, but the reason this is so effective is because this, this holds your shade cloth in place tightly without ripping it. You're not driving screws through it. You're not trying to do wooden slats to hold it down but this will hold it down permanently and tightly and you don't have to worry at all about this coming undone. So we're gonna continue this up and over the arch, the baseboard on the far end, arch on the other end, and as we go, we're pulling everything tight. So we'll show you this when we're done and show you what the, the finished product of this part looks like. And this is gonna be a nice tight beginning to the shade house before we do the end walls. All right, and here's what it looks once we got the main shade cloth put on it. So far, so good, we'll get it finished up tomorrow. We've got both of our end walls finished now. We've got both of our end walls covered with shade cloth at least as much as they're going to. This end, 
is going to be wide open just like this. Eight foot opening, easy access in and out. All spring, all summer, all the way into the fall, all the plants that we have in here will have really good shade to do all the good things that shade do towards helping plants grow. A couple things that I also wanted to mention that I, th I think I failed to mention at other places in the video. Number one, the ridge rail, the, the top rail that goes from end to end on the very top of the inside of the shade house. Now, when you're looking at this, all you see here is a little, a little fastener up there and you just lay it over the top rail and the, the rail that goes end to end, the length of the shade house, all that is is more fence top rail. And it takes four top rails, at least for a 40 foot long fence. At least that's what I used and it works out fine. You may have to saw the end of one of them off when you're done if there's a little extra, but there's nothing to that at all. And that's an easy part of this. There's nothing to that. And also I wanted to show you just kind of the finished product here of on our back wall here, just kind of how we did this with our tracking and our wiggle wire just to make the back wall stable. So make the shade cloth stable so it doesn't go flapping too much in the wind. Shade cloth doesn't catch a lot of wind anyway, but this back wall is going to be permanent and closed unless we decide to do something different with it down the road. But this just shows you a little bit about how we fastened it just to kind of stabilize all of it. And the cost breakdown for the entire build, the poles and the posts, that's the chain link fence parts, those were $1,200. The lumber for the baseboards and for the end walls was about $200. The shade cloth, about $350. And the hardware was about $500. And that includes the wiggle wire and the channel track for it, the cross connectors, which are for the top rail, and miscellaneous framing screws and bolts at various places in the build all add up to about $2,250. That's what it cost in my area and maybe a similar thing for you here in early 2023 in your area. But of course, prices are going to vary sometimes wildly depending on your location. And that is it for our shade house build. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. Again, 20 feet wide and any length you want to build it if you follow these steps. The links to the shade house parts and all the things that we use to build this are in the link below with the pole bender and all the rest. And don't forget to check out the Barn Owl Box Company. They've been really good to us and we appreciate their help with our YouTube channel. Guys, thank y'all for watching. We love y'all and we'll see you on the next one.